tupate video kesho. We shall also implement the open tender system in the importation of LPG to achieve competitive and efficient pricing of product, including other mix and match interventions that will ensure that the end user, the consumer, gets the most competitive price. Rais William Ruto agiza kuondolewa kwa ushuru na utozo wa gesi ya kupikia ili kuwapunguzia gharama watumizi. This mathematic wrote this letter and it is also in the records of the Supreme Court that we were denied access to the servers. So what Mr. Ruto was saying yesterday is a blatant lie. Kiongozi wa Azimio la Umoja Raila Odinga asisitiza kwamba server za tume ya ABC hazijawahi kufunguliwa. Na mkewe rais wa Marekani Dr. Jill Biden na wasili mhumu nchini kwa ziara siku tatu. Madam Anasim mtazamaji hadi tamati. Serikali imesema inalenga kuimarisha matumizi ya gesi ya kupikia miongoni mwa familia humo nchini. Rais William Ruto amesema hayo yatafikiwa kufuatia kuanzishwa kwa kiwanda cha gesi cha kampuni ya taifa katika kaunti ya Mombasa. Rais alikuwa akizungumza wakati wa hafla ya uzinduzi wa kiwanda hicho katika eneo maalum la kiuchumi la Dongokundu kaunti ya Mombasa. The adoption of clean modern cooking minimizes our appetite for wood fuel which has traditionally led to decimation of the national tree cover as well as illegal felling of trees on a massive scale. Liquid petroleum gas is an important transition alternative representing a major step towards clean domestic energy consumption. It is therefore beneficial to promote it as a cleaner, safer, healthier and significantly more environmentally compatible alternative to wood fuel. We shall also implement the open tender system in the importation of LPG to achieve competitive and efficient pricing of product. Na alikuwa waziri wa usalama wa kitaifa Fred Matiangi amekanusha kwamba ameagizwa kufika katika kitengo cha DCI kuhusiana na madai ya kuvamiwa kwa makazi yake ya Karen tarehe 8 mwezi huu kupitia wakili wake Danstan Omari Matiangi ambaye kwa sasa amesafiri nje ya nchi amesema kwa kulingana na sheria maagizo kama hayo yanastahili kuwasilishwa kwake binafsi na lazima yatiwe saini na afisa wa uchunguzi wa DCI au afisa wa mahakama Aliyekuwa waziri wa usalama wa kitaifa Fred Matiangi alitazamiwa kufika katika makao makuu ya kitengo cha DCI kulingana na barua moja ambayo haikuwa na sahihi yoyote ambayo imekuwa ikisambazwa kwenye vyombo vya habari kupitia barua hiyo kachero kwa jina Michael Sang alimtaka Matiangi kuandikisha taarifa kuhusiana na madai kuwa polisi walivamia makazi yake hapa Nairobi tarehe nane mwezi huu lakini mawakili wa Matiangi wakiongozwa na Dunstan Omari wamepuzilia mbali barua hiyo wakisema ni gushi wakiongeza kuwa maagizo kama hayo hayawasilishwi kupitia mitandao ya kijamii lazima ile samu uwepo vidole na yule ambaye ameandika na nawauliza waandishi wa habari nipe samu ambayo imesainiwa na polisi. Unayo? Mawakili wake hawakusema lolote kuhusu alipo Matiangi. The court order from the high court does not stop the CS from being investigated. He has nothing to hide. But the investigation must be done within the law. Kitengo cha DCI kimekanusha kwamba polisi walivamia makazi ya waziri huyo wa zamani. Kisho kiwashira Darubini. Na muungano wa azimio la Umoja wa Kenya umesisitiza kwamba sava za tume ya uchaguzi nchini hazijawahi kufunguliwa. Kinara wa azimio alikanusha taarifa ya Rais William Ruto kwamba sava za tume hiyo za uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka jana zilifunguliwa. 
moja baada ya Rais William Ruto kusema kuwa sava za tume ya uchaguzi na mipaka IEBC kuhusiana na uchaguzi mkuu wa mwaka 2022 zilifunguliwa wakati wa uchaguzi huo viongozi wa muungano wa azimio la umoja wamekanusha hayo We called you here to refute the claims by Mr. William Ruto for the servers used by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission in the last year's election have always been open and remain open. It was a plain, disgusting and horrifying lie. Raila Odinga kiandamana mgombea mwenza wake Mathakarua katibu mkuu wa Jubilee Jeremiah Kioni na aliyekuwa waziri wa ulinzi Eugene Wamalwa walisema kuwa ombi la mawakili wa azimio wakati wa rufaa ya kupinga matokeo ya uchaguzi wa urais katika mahakama ya juu la kutaka sava hizo kufunguliwa lilikataliwa mbali na kampuni ya Smartmatic ambayo ilikuwa ikisimamia sava hizo lakini ile kampuni ambayo inayojiriwa na ambayo alileta hizi mitambo hapa inaitwa Smartmatic ikaandika barua na mtarisa sini na moja mwezi wa nane kwa shirika ya IBC kusema ya kwamba hawezi kufungua hizo servers kamwe ati hizo servers kifunguliwa itaweza kutoboa siri yao ya kufanya kazi na kwa hivyo wao wenyewe hawezi kukubali hizo servers zifunguliwe Odinga akikadiri kuwa sava hizo zinapaswa kufunguliwa na kukaguliwa na taasisi huru kuhakikisha hakuwepo na dosari zozote. Nikiwa kama bwana Ruto na wenzake wanasema hiyo sio kweli ndio tumesema tunataka hizo saba zifunguliwe ili zikaguliwe na shirika wastani ambaye halengani halengi pande moja au wengine. Hiyo ndiyo itaweza kutoa kweli juu ya hii mambo ya uchaguzi. Wakati huo huo Raila amesema makataa yake ya siku 14 kwa serikali kupunguza gharama ya maisha nchini bado yapo na wataendelea kushinikiza serikali. Kamchemenza Darubini. Natukisoma mbele afya ya kiakili imetajwa kama tatizo sugu nchini huku kukiwa na hamasisho finyo kuhusu athari za ugonjwa wa kiakili kwenye utenda kazi miongoni mwa wafanyakazi wa umma. Wazanda wa afya ya kiakili sasa wanapendekezwa kuimarishwa kwa utoaji wa masisho na bajeti ya kukabili hali Kulingana na utafiti uliofanywa na shirika la afya duniani WHO mwaka 2020 uliohusisha mataifa 130, tandao la COVID-19 lilitatiza au hata kulemeza utoaji huduma za afya ya kiakili katika tatu ya mataifa yote ulimwenguni. Oziro utumishi wa umma na jinsia Aisha Jumu amesema Kenya imelipa kipaumbele swala la afya ya kiakili. We must have a budget the 2023-2024 budget that will be a mental health responsive budget ignoring mental health issues will without doubt have far reaching damaging effect to human race Wataalamu wa afya ya kiakili wametoa wito kwa wahamasisho zaidi ili kusaidia kupunguza athari za matatizo ya kiakili katika sekta ya umma We need also to pay attention to the human side of the work, you know, and so these issues concerning the, the comfort of the worker matter and so on. I remember hitting rock bottom and that was sometime in 2016 and I was like, you know, death is preferable. I normally tell people that when you get to that rock bottom point, you care about nothing. Mental health challenges or conditions they cost our economy 62.2 billion Kenya shillings. That's 62 times than what we even assumed it's going to cost the economy. Waziri Aisha Jumu aliyesema hayo alipozindua mpango utoaji hamasisho kuhusu matatizo ya kiakili miongoni mwa wafanyikazi wa umma katika idara ya mashirika ya serikali na katika county. Wafanyikazi wa umma sasa wametakiwa kujifahirisha katika kuongelelea masuala ya afya ya kiakili ili kuhakikisha kwamba utenda kazi wao kwa umma hautoathirika. Hizo far ni kiripoti ya Darubini, Nairobi. Naam, tunakwenda hapo mzikoni kiasi tutarejea hivi punde kwa mengine.
the overriding national interest that the constitutional multi-party democrat democratic state should function well and thrive in Kenya. <clears throat> that the fundamental freedoms and rights, including freedom of association, should be enhanced. That the rule of law should be preserved and that the forthcoming elections should be free and fair and those who want to participate should be accorded a reasonable opportunity to do so. I'm asking, did you see? No, we took we did we did you. I was a hundred million kilometers per hour. A hundred million kilo kilometers per hour. Kilograms. <laughs> I'm Marie Yangbo here in the southern part of the country in Oloi Tok Tok, where as you can see, farmers have lost their crops to the ongoing drought. Some families are even feeling the pressure to marry off their girls for an income. That story coming soon on KBC Channel One. Jumapili hii kwenye runinga ya KBC, ungana nae askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu kuanzia saa moja hadi saa mbili asubuhi. Ningetaka nikwambie our Jehovah God because the Bible says he is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He is able to take you to a place of abundance. He is able to take you to Rehobothi in the name of Jesus Christ. Kipindi ni neno la neema. Ukiletewa naye askofu Michael Wanderi wa kanisa la Christian Foundation Fellowship Kiambu usikose Do you have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Asante sana kusalia nasi na tunaendelea taarifa zetu na Dr. Jill Biden mke wa rais wa Marekani amewasili nchini kwa ziara rasmi ya siku tatu inayolenga kuimarisha uhusiano ulioko baina ya mataifa haya mawili ya Kenya na Marekani Dr. Jill Biden alielakiwa na mama wa taifa Rachel Ruto anatarajiwa kukutana na walioathiriwa na njaa huko nchini Mwendo wa saa kumi na dakika 28 kamili ndege ya kijeshi iliyokuwa imembeba Dr. Jill Biden mkewe rais wa Amerika ilitua kwenye uwanja wa kimataifa wa Jomo Kenyatta huku usalama ukiimarishwa kwenye uwanja huo. Mama wa taifa Rachel Ruto akiandamana na maafisa wengine wa serikali alimlaki Dr. Jill Biden katika ziara yake ya kwanza nchini tango Rais Biden achaguliwe kuwa rais wa Amerika. Baada ya kuwasili Dr. Biden alifanya mashauri ya faraga na mama wa taifa Rachel Ruto kabla ya kujiunga na wajumbe wengine kwa karamu kuhusu masala ya wanawake akiandamana na balozi wa Amerika nchini Meg Whitman. Dr. Biden anawasili nchini Kenya wakati ambapo zaidi ya kaunti shirini zinakumbwa na makali ya njaa na ukame. Dr. Biden anatarajiwa kuandaa mikutano na viongozi mbalimbali mbali humu nchini kujadili juhudi za kukabiliana na ukame 
na njaa ambayo inazidi kukidhiri humu nchini. Nikiripotia darubini kutoka uwanja wa ndege wa kimataifa wa Jomo Kenyatta hapa Nairobi, mimi ni Ben Chumba. Na muhudumu wa boda boda Victor Odede Bwire ambaye alipatikana na hatia ya kupanga njama ya shambulizi la kigaidi kwenye jumba la mikutano la Jomo Kenyatta hapa jijini Nairobi amehukumiwa kifungo cha miaka 30 gerezani. Mahakama ilisema kwamba upande wa mashtaka umethibitisha bila tashwishi yote mashtaka mawili dhidi ya Bwire na kifungo hicho kinanuiwa kuwafunzo kwa wale wanaunga mkono vitendo vya ugaidi nchini. Ni mshukiwa Victor Odede Bwire wakati hukumu dhidi yake ilipotolewa. Hakimu mkuu mwandamizi wa mahakama ya milimani Bernard Ochoi alisema Bwire alipatikana na hatia ya kupanga njama ya mashambulizi ya kigaidi kwenye jumba la KICC mnamo mwezi Januari mwaka 2019. Kwa kosa hilo Bwire alihukumiwa kifungo cha miaka 20 gerezani na miaka mingine kumi kwa kosa la kukusanya habari ambazo zingetumiwa kwa shughuli za kigaidi. He should be treated as a first offender and uh, to possibly consider an uncustodial sentence. Your know, terrorism is not just making an offense and our submission is that if the accused person with the help of his conspirator is concluded or successful you know, in collecting the information and submitting to his coordinator and the act committed the honor the effect could have been devastating for the Republic of Kenya. Mahakama ilisema kosa hilo lilikuwa na uzito mkubwa kwani lingesababisha maafa makubwa na uharibifu wa mali. In the presentence uh, report the ATPU asked the court to consider the impact by terror acts exposed to the nation which include loss of life um, loss of businesses and uh, uh, generally negative impact uh, to the economy due to sometimes the location of businesses uh, due to, to terror threats Bwire alikamatwa alipokuwa akikusanya habari kuhusu jumba la KICC na kutumia ukurasa wake wa Facebook kusambaza habari hizo kwa washukiwa wa ugaidi kutoka Somalia waliodaiwa kuwa na nia ya kushambulia jumba hilo. Kwingineko mahakama ya juu imeamuru kwamba uamuzi wa bodi ya mashirika yasiyo ya serikali kwa kuzuia mashoga kubuni chama chao ni ubaguzi. Mahakama iliamua kwamba licha ya ushoga kuharamishwa humu nchini Mashoga, wasagaji na watu wa jinsia mseto wana haki ya kutangamana. Naibu jaji mkuu Filomena Mwilu na majaji Smoki Nwanjala na Njoki Ndungu waliunga mkono kauli hiyo lakini majaji Mohamed Ibrahim na William Ouko wakaipinga wakisema mashoga hawapaswi kuruhusiwa kubuni vyama vyao humu nchini. Ben Troinjue Darubini Kama imeshika wangashifu. Angashifu. Uyo mama ameweka mkopo wewe yake. I'm asking did you see? No we told we think we think you. Bomba ligani na pale bebe yako alikidnapiwa. I was 100 million kilometers per hour. 100 million kilo, kilometers per hour. Per hour. Eh kilograms. <laughs> Enjoy a selection of the best Regina Ray and Tim Garzi. Bado jamwambia na mlike. Mrieleza jambo chini ya mkono kutoka nikuje hapa. Love blossoms in Mexico with the Trier sisters in Las Bandidas. I beg you please don't go. I want you to be the happiest man in the world with a woman who appreciates and respects you. An array of music reads. <laughs>
local gems. And we see the chat with the Diambo. You know, I can't even tell whether you're looking at me, seeing me. The <laughs> Classic comedy. <laughs> Enjoy the Divas program in this February only on KBC Channel One. <laughs> Kenya's watching. Karibu kwenye biashara. Waajiri wa mirai serikali kuahirisha utekelezaji wa nyongeza ya matozo ya hazina ya malipo ya kustaafu hadi mwezi Julai mwaka huu ili kuwapa muda wa kufanyia marekebisho bajeti zao. Licha ya mahakama ya rufani kuagiza kwamba ada hizo zianze kutekelezwa mwezi huu, Rais wa Shirikisho la Waajiri huko nchini Habil Olaka amesema hatua hiyo inafaa kuahirishwa kufuatia wasiwasi kwamba itaongeza gharama ya utendaji biashara. Taarifa kamili ni kwenye mseto wa biashara. Mapema mwezi huu mahakama ya Rufaa iliamuru kwamba sheria ya malipo ya kustaafu nambari ya 45 ya mwaka 2013 ilitekelezwa kikatiba. Sheria ilipendekeza nyongeza ya matozo ya kila mwezi ya azina hiyo kwa wafanyakazi kutoka shilingi ya mbili hadi shilingi 1180 kila mwezi. Waajiri wanatarajiwa kuchangia kiasi sawa na hicho. Hatua hiyo inapaswa kuanza kutekelezwa mwezi huu. Hata hivyo shirikisho la waajiri linaiomba serikali kwa We did appeal for the period of uh, implementation of the act to be pushed back. This is one of the requests we, we have made and will continue to, to appeal for to give employers time because we are seeing that remitting contributions next month will pose challenges and we are looking forward to having agreement on what a reasonable time frame is for us to be able to say that yes we are now ready to implement the changes to the NSSF Act 2013 Kwingineko serikali inanuia kushirikiana kwa karibu na sekta ya binafsi kwa harakisha mchakato wa kujumuisha ubunifu wa kidijitali katika uchumi wa taifa kwa kuzingatia mkakati wa kitaifa wa dijitali katibu msimamizi katika wizara ya habari mawasiliano na uchumi wa kidijitali Chimwanga Mongo ametoa wito kwa taasisi zaidi kuwekeza katika ustawishaji wa ubunifu ambao ni nguzo ya malengo ya jumla ya ukuzaji talanta huko nchini we must continue to upgrade our training programs upgrade our curriculum upgrade our teaching methods and take advantage of the internet to spread opportunities to all Kenyans no matter where they are but as a ministry i believe that the digital skills learning is critical at all stages of learning from basic to higher education we had at the beginning hard times we have showed what happens we had harsh dialogues with all officially and not officially uh, but um, this was such a moment Na mahu jambo uh, mwanasporti popote ulipo na karibu tena sana katika darubini michezo mimi ni Art Eye Lemoka Tuanze na taarifa za soka ambapo Karibangi Sharks imepanda hadi nafasi ya 11 kwenye msimamo wa ligi kuu ya soka huko nchini baada ya kuishinda Sofapaka magoli mawili kwa sifuri kwenye mechi ya ligi iliyochezwa uwanjani Kasarani Annex Tizama jinsi mambo yalivyokuwa baada ya timu hizo kukosa 
uh, baada ya timu hizo kukosa kuona lango katika kipindi cha kwanza Sharks ilifunga mabao mawili katika kipindi cha pili na kutoa alama kamili tatu hizo iwezesha kupunguza uh, pengo baina yake na bandari FC na yoshikilia nafasi ya kumi Sofa paka ilioanza mechi hiyo mbele ya wakinzani wao imesalia katika nafasi ya 13 kwa alama 18 huku ikiendelea kutafuta ushindi wa tano msimu huu ligi hiyo itaendelea kesho kwa mechi sita zitakazochezwa kote nchini nazo mechi mbili za mwisho za raundi hiyo ya 17 zitachezwa siku ya Jumapili namna timu ya taifa ya raga ya wachezaji saba kila upande shujaa inanuia kuandikisha matokeo bora katika mkondo wa sito wa msururu wa mashindano ya raga duniani jijini Los Angeles HSBC mwishoni mwa Juma hili ili kujitoa kwenye nafasi za kushushwa daraja Na mwanariadha Rebecca Mwangi anaishi huko nchini Japan aliibuka mshindi katika mbio za mita elfu kumi katika mkondo wa pili wa mashindano ya riadha ya weekend iliyoandaliwa katika uwanja wa taifa wa Nyayo mashindano hayo ambayo yamejumuishwa kwenye orodha ya mashindano ya uorodheshaji ya shirikisho la riadha duniani yamewavutia zaidi ya wanariadha tano. Mashindano hayo yalianza kwa mbio za mita elfu kumi ambapo mwanariadha anayeishi nchini Ujapani Rebecca Mwangi aliibuka mshindi baada ya kutumia muda wa dakika 32 na sekunde 37.4. Agnes Mumbua na Edna Jerotich walifuatana katika nafasi za pili na tatu mtawalia. <tos> sinakuwa na haraka but the time will come kwenye mbio za mita elfu tano za wanariadha wenye chini ya umri wa miaka ishirini Mario Jemgetich na Diana Cherotich walinyakuwa nafasi ya kwanza na pili mtawalia walikosa kushiriki katika mashindano ya mbio za nyikani duniani jijini Bathurst Australia kutokana na matatizo ya hati ya visa well cross si kuweza kupata visa nikasema sitaweza give up nitaendelea kuangana na mazoezi na mshukuru Mungu sababu ameanza kushinda India leo. Beatrice Machoka na mwanafunzi wa kidato cha nne Samuel Toire walishinda mbio za mita nne ya wanariadha wanawake wenye umri wa miaka ishirini na wanariadha wavulana wenye umri chini ya miaka kumi na minane. Nataka nijaenda kurepresent Kenya. Ni make kay hero. Ni bebe yo 400. Mashindano mengine yaliyokuwa na ushindani mkubwa ni pamoja na shindano la kurusha kisahani, tufe na mashindano ya kuruka. Finali za mbio za mita mia moja, mia mbili, mia moja na kumi kuruka vizuizi kwa wanaume, mbio za mita elfu tano kwa wanaume na urushaji sagai zitafanyika mnamo kesho. Namna tukitoka huko nyayo sasa tuangazie taarifa za kimataifa ambapo timu inayoshiriki inayoshiri ligi kuu ya soka nchini Uingereza Manchester United ilitoka nyuma bao moja na kuishinda Barcelona magoli mawili kwa moja uwanjani Old Trafford na kufuzu kwa mechi za 16 bora ya ligi ya Europa. Kadhalika Juventus ya Italia pia ilifuzu baada ya kuitandika Nantes mabao matatu kwa sifuri. Na mpaka hapo basi tunafika mwisho wa darubini michezo asante sana kwa utazamaji wako tufanye vivi hivi tena hiyo kesho muda na wasa kama wale na kurejesha kwake Harith alikadhalika uh, Cynthia mimi ni at i lemoka na nimechoka namba tansi mm-hmm. pata jina jipya lakini <laughs> 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 inatokea inakaa amekosa kuona Cynthia kwa muda mrefu <laughs> Basi <laughs> ndio kama hivyo. Kumalizia malizia ni kwamba katika maisha kuna mambo mengine yanakuwa magumu 
mpaka na kufanya ukate tamaa lakini wazee wa Himaza kale wanasema kwamba sio kile mlango uliofungwa umekomewa wakati mwingine shikuma kidogo mhm mm kwa aje <laughs> usiogope 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 <laughs> naitwa Harit Sadiq alamsiki na mimi naitwa Nancy Nyancha tukutane tena wiki ijayo papa hapa majali